As is now a tradition of mine, I went to Adepticon and saw the reveals. In doing so, I let out the mighty wah, and hence my voice I threw out. Which is why I almost sound like Emperor Palpatine from Family Guy, at least from my perspective. Regardless, the reveals from last night I do have thoughts on, and... I want to discuss because it's been a while and I forgot to do LVO last time, which, by the way, here are those thoughts. Anyways, let us begin. To simply get it out of the way, there were only teases for Necromunda and Horus Heresy. Horus Heresy, I simply have no desire in collecting. As to Necromunda, there really isn't much else to say. It's a teaser. They don't really reveal anything. Of course, anyone could guess that. 40k in retrospective kinda had a shit reveal last night. Mostly because all that they really revealed that was new were new Chaos Lords. Granted, I do play Chaos, I do like Chaos, and the models, for the most part, are very nice and customizable. Of course, they will also be coming in FOMO bundles, will also still be expensive, and overall is still unfortunate. Still, at least we get new models that are up to date now. In Warcry, we get some pretty cool new Ossiarch Bone Reapers and Sylvaneth, with a unique twist of actually having flesh. The Bone Reapers in general are pretty cool, and the premise is very interesting, even if it does sound a bit weird since they are fearless and yet they punish someone for being f afraid. Regardless, the centerpiece centaur model is a very nice one and I will have to be sure to collect it sometime. The Sylvaneth are okay. I mean, they're just regular Sylvaneth models, just with more fleshy bits. I mean, it, it's hard to kind of make them more interesting than that. That terrain piece, though, is very cool. Underworlds is... Truth be told, I don't know how to feel about Underworlds anymore. They are very much hit or miss for a game that is practically unplayed in my area, not to mention a bit difficult to keep up with. Still, the human faction that they do have is pretty cool, really exemplifying more of the Age of Sigmar fanatics in terms of lightning, which I guess makes sense. The Flesh Eater courts are cool, and I am getting into the faction as a whole, but this warband, I don't know, doesn't exactly strike anything for me. The bat's probably the most interesting thing out of all of this. For the old world, I'm not gonna lie, the reveal of the dwarves kinda got me excited. I really, really like dwarves. Returning old kits that I actually thought still hold up pretty well is a good thing. The looks of the new Slayers from the new video I am very excited for, since the possibility of now building a proper Slayer army, like I've always wanted to, is coming to fruition, especially since we now have a new model for the Slayer King in his younger days. Very cool. Along with the new models for Thanes, Lords, and of course, the Shield Bearer, it's looking quite promising and actually making me want to start collecting now. Kill Team, I will admit, was an interesting choice. We did finally get more Hearthkin Pioneers. Of course, honestly, any more Votan content I will happily take, since we do desperately need it. Unsurprisingly, the other kill team was basically an upgrade kit. Surprisingly, though, it was Gene Stealers and the refurbish of the Brood Brothers. More so, they brought in the Patriarch and the various squad that you can mix and match with. I'm a bit conflicted. On the one hand, the Pioneers are really cool and very interesting, yet at the same time, it's probably going to be the only Votan content we get for a while. The Gene Stealer side is mostly just bringing in a previously released kit, plus an upgrade sprue, but it is an interesting take, and also bringing in a massive powerhouse like the Patriarch to see how it plays in game really piques my interest. Okay, I think my voice is getting better, so I'm just going to try to speak normally for this last part. So, as we finally get to Age of Sigmar, we basically get two fairly big reveals. The first one is, of course, the whole Dawnbringer book that's, you know, basically going to end off the whole series and the whole edition, which we'll get to, but... More importantly is, on that note, we get a new Chaos character of Abraxia, the Sphere of the Everchosen, which, essentially, when you think of Bellacor, he has Eternus, Archaon now has his Eternus. And the way that to describe her is actually pretty cool, with, like, a spear that like, turns people into Chaos Spawn, but you always need to be concentrating, or you get turned into a spawn, hence why, like... The one time she lost concentration, she grew horns and the just the whole dragon mount she's riding. It's it's a cool model, and the, the fact that I think the bundle with her and like the three Varen guard is already a really I think a good start when she's going to be released because I really do need Varen guard. I'm looking forward to this. Oh shoot! I didn't even see this. I didn't. They 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 have a little piece of terrain that they're going to be bringing out. I thought I thought that was just like conversion of the of the of the 40k thing oh okay that's i'm actually okay this is really cool <coughs> ah, what's going again and the last biggest reveal was the cinematic for age of sigmar 
fourth edition. A massive Skaven invasion with like, I guess, this whole like city popping out. The idea and realization that Stormcasts are usually just having to die over and over and lose part of themselves each time. It's it's a good cinematic, and there were also a lot of reveals from the Skaven side, from like, I'm going to guess, like, we're finally going to get new rat ogres, finally, there's going to be, like, this weird, like, rat hound mount, this mobile minigun, which looks really awesome, but, you know, and also new Stormcast stuff, but that's not going to... That's not really new to anyone when it comes to a new edition. The thing is, though, this is going to be 4th edition, and the way that they described it, especially from the video that they showed off, really was reminiscent of 10th edition, which I hate. Like, the, the way that they're saying this is there's going to be free rules, everything's going to be updated when this edition comes out. That's exactly how 10th edition started. And then they pulled out the rug from everyone. So now it's like, oh, when well now the codexes are still going to be coming out. So then you have to pay for them and then the free rules are no longer online. And... I've been burned once already, and I don't want to be burned again, so it's just, ugh. People have also listed all the changes that they did mention so far, so I'm just kind of going to rattle them off, or at least more of the notable points I want to talk about. Universal special rules are coming in, so like, champions, musicians, standard bearers, I think they're all now going to be clumped in together, which, you know, I think that's actually a really good thing. It just, before in the past, it was always confusing on like, what each of these things did, and after a while, everything just kind of got streamlined, but you still had all this vast descriptive text that didn't really make a whole lot of sense. So kind of just streamlining that further, I think, is a good thing. Weapon range being gone and everything now is just being three inches is an interesting take. I know for, like, some units that I've always wanted to run, like, uh, massive blobs of, like, uh, Blood Reavers, you know, it was always kind of a struggle to get them into combat and just... Weapon range has always been kind of a finicky thing to balance, but it, it was a choice and it actually made a huge difference on like what you brought. So removing that I think is good, but in a way I also am a little worried because remember some models it have smaller bases than others like Ossiarch Bone Reapers or Daughters of Cain. So, and if they're all able just to get clumped in within at least three inches and they get all their attacks off, well, it's not going to feel good for maybe the massive Stormcast players or whoever else that, you know, just might be struggling a bit. I mean, okay, granted, that was like that before, but it's... It's it, it, the rest of the rules. We'll have to see if how that will actually go. And combat patrol for AOS is just spearhead. You know, I've, I think they changed the name recently with the boxes, so that's not really a super huge surprise. But I am also curious as to how that will play out because I've heard thing I have, I've heard good things about combat patrol. No one's in my area played it, but with how popular AOS is in my area, I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see how many other people might want to get into it through that. But anyways, yeah, uh, just. Also, overall, a lot of good stuff. I'm very skeptical over 4th edition. Not too many uh, bad takes this year, which is nice. And uh, I think that'll be it, because now I gotta enjoy the rest of Adepticon.